I've not long since covered the excellent Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra here in 2022 and why I think you should be looking at it. But if there is one smartphone from last year that challenges the S21 Ultra for the best of the best in terms of value in the overall package, I think it has to be the Sony Xperia 1 III. But let's see why. First of all, just look at this phone. It's tall and it's thin and it kind of books a trend of smartphones we've seen for many a year. You don't really see many phones out there that look like this. If you're a movie buff, then instantly you'll be drawn to that 21 by 9 aspect ratio. But from a look and feel perspective, it is quite interesting. Not least because the frame is less wide, but almost it feels taller or longer because it is quite thin on the X axis. Realistically, it is a minor change, but side by side with another phone from the same year and even current phones, I think it really does stand out in a good way. And it reminds me a little bit of a TV remote, but the edges are sharp, less sharp because those squared edges now have soft chamfers. I will say I have used the Xperia 1 III without a case and the metal chassis is in a really decent condition because of that. But I'll admit I haven't had the Xperia 1 III every single day in my pocket, but I am pretty confident that it's a bit of a beast and it can take one hell of a beating even without a case. Although I would admit you probably should get one. This is a heavy little phone and glass and metal do combine here and I think you can kind of tell that this is a Sony product from the outset. There's just a lot of things such as clean lines with that frosted glass on the black version kind of looking a little bit more grey in my opinion. I would say it's sleek and dare I say minimal. Personally though, I do think it lives up to my own design expectations of a Sony product. It means it's simple, no frills, it's functional, but with a little bit of hint of class thrown in there for good measure. That is probably a terrible summation of what an Xperia phone is distilled into a poorly structured sentence though. I don't really hate the front side of this phone as it kind of breaks the current convention of mini or at least shrinking bezels and I actually really like it for a few reasons. Firstly, this is a very, very good screen. It's OLED, it's 120Hz and actually 4K UHD in that 21 by 9 aspect ratio. So if you didn't know, that means 1644 by 3840 pixels. That's rare even nowadays. Can you tell the difference though between 1440p and 4K on a 6.5 inch screen? Well personally, I'm not quite sure, but it is a great OLED that's tuned perfectly for movies and TV shows and I do genuinely love it. Although software does dynamically switch between 1440p and 4K, which makes it hard to tell day to day. Native aspect ratio films though with no cutouts or notches or whatever obscuring things, it really does make this thing not tough to love. Another major upside though with this Xperia 1 III is the fact that it has front facing stereo speakers and it's weird how front facing stereo speakers have kind of been dropped from just about every flagship phone in favour of smaller or at least minimal bezels. That said they do look nice but this is just much more functional. The added bonus as well is that you can kind of grasp each side of the display when in landscape mode without obscuring the screen. I think that's one major benefit that many people will really love. Add in Sony's dynamic vibration feature this also gives an extra kind of oomph because it uses on-device haptics to simulate deep bass rumbles. It is sometimes a little bit rattly towards the top end, but with a little tuning, it's a cool sound enhancer, especially with movies that have tons of action and maybe even YouTube videos that have lots of deep bassy portions. There are a few things though I hate about this form factor. The dedicated Google Assistant button is quite annoying, and I genuinely thought this was a brilliant idea just a few years ago, but it just seems a bit redundant now that you can use your voice to activate the voice assistant. There's also the side mounted fingerprint scanner, which itself is nice and fast and it's pretty good, but the power button is awful because of this integration, because it's just mushy and it's just not nice at all to use as far as I'm concerned. It is a shame because other buttons on the Xperia 1 III are nice and clicky, especially the dedicated camera shutter button, which itself has a nice textured finish and just great placement for taking photos in native landscape mode. And I'd love to see this on more flagship tier phones in the future. Here's some good news though. There are some added hardware benefits here that you won't find anywhere else, or at least on a flagship tier device such as this. There's the micro SD card slot for memory expansion. There's also a 3.5 millimeter headphone port, which you won't find on any other so-called flagship over the past couple of years. Then there is a notification LED here. Yes, this is the trifecta of long since lost editions on other so-called flagship phones. Now, when you combine this hardware package with the best of the best specifications from last year, including the Snapdragon 888, 12 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of base storage, this is a beast. 
Sony also takes a light and minimal approach to Android 2. It's very close to vanilla AOSP builds, so a little bit pixel light or closer to Android 1. And as of this video going live, Android 12 is available to download, but I am actually still waiting for the update to arrive on my unlocked model, which is a little bit annoying, but the changes here are fairly minimal, at least according to Sony's official changelog and dedicated update website. That does mean though that I can only talk from the position of someone who's run Android 11 on this phone, and while it's not the very latest update available, I have found it to be very, very good, and the performance is genuinely exceptional. I do like that there are some neat extra features added by Sony to help you master this taller aspect ratio, and I didn't think I would use things such as the one-handed mode all that often, but they're helpful features that really do help improve usability on what is a slightly different form factor here. As I've just said, the performance is a flagship tier even in 2022, and so long as things do stay updated and those light Android changes don't become heavy Android changes, the top of the line specifications do keep things ticking over very, very nicely. Now let's talk about what is the single most contentious element of the Xperia 1 III, and sadly that is the camera. That's not an indictment of it, I just need to tell you the short of it. The Xperia camera setup is very, very good, However, it's just not quite as good in basic point and shoot scenarios all of the time, and I'm gonna explain why. Now, the easy solution is to slow down and take your time, or even get in depth with what I consider to be the best pro mode on any phone, period. Now, if you like tinkering and playing with full manual controls from shutter speed, ISO, aperture, and exposure, you can do so much more than a novice would be able to, but I do think most novices might find this hard to digest, and you may feel really daunted or at least overawed. That said, I still like the triple camera setup in the auto mode here, but it's maybe an 8 out of 10 across the board, which in, in and of itself is really great. That said, I'd consider the S21 Ultra a 9.5 out of 10 in its own auto mode here. I do love messing around with the periscope zoom lens is included on the Xperia 1 III, but it does cap out at 12.5x zoom, with things still looking pretty overall, like, very good but with a little bit of noise thrown in for extra good measure towards the 10x plus zoom range. The camera setup as well has been tuned by the Alpha camera team, so the traits are very similar to the A-series cameras, and this is something that you just simply will not get anywhere else. So here's a short summation of the stills capabilities. I think if you want to get it manual and have manual controls, there is no better phone out there. In terms of auto, just point and shoot capabilities, then maybe, maybe I would look elsewhere. That said, it is still a very good camera setup that you should take your time to ponder over. It's also worth noting Sony has added some very serious video recording capabilities out of the box here too. You can record 4K UHD 60 FPS and even 120 FPS. And then on top of that, there are more, more fine tuning manual controls to play around with here too. By mobile phone standards, the video controls are genuinely practical and rivaled, much like those pro controls for the still setup. And there are even a few Sony Pro color profiles slapped in here for good measure. Now, I personally would rather use my dedicated camera, which is the Panasonic Lumix S5, and I think it would trounce the Xperia 1 III in terms of video flexibility, but I can't deny that having these options to experiment and play around with is gonna be a nice option for some people out there. Will it replace a dedicated camera? No, not for me, but it might save you lugging around your DSLR or even mirrorless camera when on a trip, and that is something that is definitely worth mentioning. Let's talk about the battery life though before wrapping up this review as it's another area that, at least as far as I'm concerned, really impresses, or at least it did, given my own unique usage. The 4,500 mAh battery can tackle a full day, no questions asked, no matter your usage patterns. It will boil down though to how you use your phone, but for me, that included keeping the screen at 120 hertz, which I think you should really for the best day-to-day -day experience with this Sony smartphone. On a few occasions, I would charge before the end of the day, but that only really happened when filming this long-term review, and I was really genuinely hammering this phone more so than I would on a general day-to-day -day basis. For those wanting screen on-time figures, I think five to six hours tended to be the norm when I used this phone quite heavily, three to four with my usual days, but that did leave around 30 to 40% battery remaining. The previous times was 50 to 60% before I hit the charger, and I would usually take it off charger on 8 a.m. and head to bed at 11 p.m. For me, this is a good performer that I think for most people out there will be pretty much fine. That said, you can always give it a little top up with 33 watt fast charging if you need to. So to summarize, I've got to say the Xperia 1 III feels like a love letter from Sony to a very select group of hardcore fans and people out there unwilling to compromise on their Android phone. 
Most phones kind of take features and functions away or at least have over the past few years, but the Xperia 1 3 is chock full of everything you could possibly want and even a little you probably didn't even know or remember that you did. If you want those things, it's one of the best used phones of 2021 to buy here in 2022 without question. So that's the Xperia 1 3 in a nutshell in 2022. Maybe not quite for everyone, but if you do care about having access to classic smartphone functions and features and then a flagship experience on top, probably the best. It's going to be the enthusiast device of choice and now a much lower price, which is a good thing as I think it was a little bit overpriced when it did launch last year. That said, I do hope you enjoyed this video and maybe learned a few things. If you managed to make it this far though, how about you leave an egg emoji down below and then hit that subscribe and like button before you head out. That's it. Cheers for watching and I'll speak to you in a bit.